in shortcuts and sales hacks and in efficiencies and sales enablement, I believe you ought to be able to get all the resources that you can and all the productivity opportunities that, that you can possibly get your hands on. But none of those will ever, ever be a replacement for good old fashioned hard work. If you want results, you've got to do the work. I don't mean that you have to work longer hours, but I do mean during those hours when you're working, that you're really working and that you're working on the right things. Results in sales sometimes happen out of luck. You were in the right place at the right time or you inherited a, a cash cow account, but you know that you're going to have to fight those numbers in the future. So you want to do some hard work now to shore up and not find yourself in a, in a big deep ditch that's hard to get out of. Hard work pays. Even when you've got all the shortcuts and all the productivity tools in your tool belt that you can, using them wisely, working hard, will help you to get those results you're looking for faster and more consistently. Ultimately, it's all about the results. Why do all the work, no matter how much fun it might be, unless you're going to get something out of it? Uh, that's how I feel about things. I, I like to be productive. What I'm showing you here and on the next slide, these are some before and after photos from 2019. Whatever comes out of the garden ends up ultimately on the plate. Might not be my plate because I give away a lot of stuff. I trade for many, many things, but it's going on somebody's plate. And I enjoy recipes and exchanging ideas and creating in the kitchen too. That's all part of the fun. What you produce gives you opportunities that are different from other people's. The more you produce, the more opportunities you have. The better you produce, the better the opportunities you have when it comes to results. This is true whether you're building people, whether you're growing sales, no matter what you're doing in life, hard work does pay off. In my garden, I'm growing 57 different things this year. I'm gonna have lots of opportunities to experiment and try new things. Every day, whatever comes in in the produce box that day will become something for dinner that night or for a canned or frozen or, or sealed item that we use in the future. I do a lot, I dehydrate foods, I, I uh, freeze foods, whatever it takes to be able to use it at some point in the future. And I get to try new things, things I'd never ever thought about trying before. What you're looking at right here in the upper right of the plate, that is my new signature dish. It's made with Swiss chard and with the leaves of beets. It's got a little bit of fresh garlic in there and sometimes I put fresh Parmesan in with it. There's a little white wine and some lemon juice. Let me tell you, it's out of this world. And if you've never tried Swiss chard, it's worth a try. Hit me up if you want the recipe. Potatoes are fascinating to me. I've never grown them in dirt because I've always heard what a hassle it is. You have to be able to dig down into the dirt with a shovel and do it very carefully so you don't nick the potatoes as you're shoveling them out. But I decided to give it a try in bales of straw because the harvesting process is entirely different. This photo on the left hand side that's not dirt. That is a potato in a straw bale. The straw bale has decomposed so much since the beginning of the season that it actually looks like and feels like very, very, very loose dirt at the top. And so when I harvest the straw bales that are that decomposed with potatoes in them, potatoes I planted in, in late March and didn't harvest until early November, when uh, it gets to this point, I can literally kick gently the side of the straw bale with my foot and the potatoes just fall out. And out of only three bales of straw, I got enough potatoes to last us for months and we were eating potatoes often. 
way too often. <laughs> and even before that, I had harvested new potatoes earlier in the season because I just I, I wanted to see how they were. And you can try all sorts of things if you're growing herbs, especially. I dry my herbs. I've, I've used dill in a hundred different ways. I never even knew how much I liked dill until I gave it a try. The results matter and your willingness to try new things gives you an opportunity to drive new and different results. Things that you never knew you liked, maybe yellow squash, or maybe it's, it's purple carrots, maybe it's beets. You think you don't like them until you find out there are all new ways to prepare them. Sweet potatoes, wax beans, by the way, don't bother boiling beans, saute fresh beans, they're so much better. Uh, whatever it is that, that you want to give a try to, you'll find that the results are worth the hard work that you put in. I grew a lot of spaghetti squash last year in just a small pot in dirt. It was an afterthought. And those things were incredible in terms of their yield. Well, I'd also been growing a, a lot of tomatoes, so I made many, many batches of spaghetti sauce, spaghetti squash, and spaghetti squash, it's a match made in heaven. When you make your spaghetti squash from scratch without preservatives and sugar and all the other junk in it, and you put it with your spaghetti squash instead of pasta, it's a pretty healthy, delicious meal. Would never have known that if I hadn't been willing to, to give it a try. Whatever the results are that you're looking for, don't limit yourself. Think outside the box, stretch your imagination, Maybe the results you can get will be a little different, or maybe you're gonna fall short of the results you were looking for, so you're trying to supplement, you wanna augment those results. Remain open-minded and you'll be able to do that. Be willing to experiment and you'll always get bigger, better results.